Hi everyone, this is Mike McGee from the Nutanix TME team. In this demo, we're going to step through how Nutanix Era helps you with SQL Server provisioning automation. Provisioning starts with defining profiles. These are customizable categories to help with deployment standardization. There are four main categories, as you can see here, of profiles, including the software profile, compute, network, and database. If we start with the software profile, this is simply an existing image of a virtual machine that you would have running on the Nutanix platform, something that you could customize specific to a given build of SQL with the settings that you prefer, that you would include within the software profile. We would take an image of this, wrap it up, and include it as a software profile for you to deploy. You use the compute profile to help you define the size of a given instance. You can have multiple profiles for a given SQL Server instance. You can see in this case, we have a default compute profile of 4 vCPUs and 32 gigabytes of memory. The networking profile, as it sounds, would be the VLANs that you would allow for that given database service for network connectivity. In this case, we have a public service VLAN called Demo VMs, but you can always add additional VLANs based on your environment. It's as simple as adding a given error resource. In this case, you can simply select add and all the virtual networks on your given Nutanix cluster will appear. You can choose a given network, whether it has IP address management or not, and you can have ERA actually manage the IPs as well based on its own custom pool. Lastly, under profiles, we have the database parameters. Uh, the database parameters, as you can imagine, are the specific settings that you want for a given database or a given instance. And for SQL Server specifically, we have two options. One is the instance parameter. So if you want to define the named instance or SQL Server instance and what it can do, and then the database parameters, as you can have multiple databases per instance. So you can have different settings for each. Once you have these categories defined, you can start doing different provisioning operations. There are several layers at which you can do this. So we'll start with the database server layer. And this is really the area within ERA to allow you to deploy a server for the purposes of, of either just doing deployments, being a source database within a time machine, or maybe a clone target. There's two main ways to do this. You can register an existing instance, very similar to how we created the software profile. You can choose an existing virtual machine already deployed on the platform. And what we'll do is we'll install the ERA agent on that given virtual machine, allow it to become a part of the environment for management. You would specify the instance name within SQL Server and any required credentials to connect to the operating system and also the SQL instance. If you want to start from scratch, you can provision a new instance. You can do that from a combination of the software profiles like we mentioned earlier, or you can even use an existing time machine, which is a point in time capture of the operating environment for that given virtual machine along with the database. In this case, we'll choose a software profile like the one we showed earlier. You, in combination with that software profile, you would also create a compute profile and also the network profile. And then optionally, because we're going to just prep this image as a part of deployment, you can specify a license key, join a domain, etc., and make sure the proper users have access to that instance. Now, this area within ERA is for just deploying the database server, but you can also do a compound operation where not only do you deploy a database server, but also deploy a database on top of it. So if we go here and look at the source database area, we can do something very similar. So we can register an existing instance and not just register the server, but also register the databases within that server. So we'll select SQL Server. We can go ahead and say anything maybe already registered on this particular environment. Select that given SQL Server that isn't a source database yet. And then we can specify the specific database within that instance that we want to register and have managed via a time machine. I know that database name is TPCC, and then we'll set our time machine preferences, how we want to do snapshot backups, whether we want to manage the logs of the instance, et cetera. Alternatively, you can provision a database server and a database at the same time. So in this case, we're going to create a new server. We'll go ahead and select that software profile. Again, we'll select a compute profile, a network profile, and because we're deploying a new instance, we'll select the database instance profile to apply the settings that we want. We'll go ahead and give that database server a name. 
also give the local administrator a password. And then again, optionally, if you want to join a domain, you can do that as well. The next page is where we define the database. So we'll deploy a database based on Nutanix best practices. You just give us a size and give us a database parameter profile like we showed before. And if there's anything you'd like to do in combination, either pre or post, you can do customized scripts as well. Lastly, we'll also configure a time machine around that provisioned instance. Once you do do a deployment, you'll see a registered instance within ERA. If it was deployed based on a given profile, those profiles would show up. If it was registered, it would be registered based on its existing configuration. When you do register a source instance, like I mentioned, you're going to create a time machine around it. And that time machine is going to be a history and an ongoing SLA of snapshots and log backups across a given time frame. We'll cover time machines in more detail in a follow-up video. Thanks for watching.